Mm. Jai Gurudev and Jai Masters. There are two very, very distinct lives that you can live on this planet, on this plane. One is, I'm not okay. I need things to be the way I want to be okay. Then you're out there working with the world. Sounds terrible, but I have to say it to try and take. I need something. I'm not okay. And there are things that you and everybody else and the weather and the car in front of me and every single thing can do that will make me feel better or make me feel worse. So that's how you're interacting with this world. The other way is extremely different. It is, I am okay. I'm filled with love, filled with joy, filled with inspiration. And the world is a place in which I can express that. I can express my love. I can express my creativity. I can express the inspiration. I can express my gratitude, beauty. Then it doesn't matter what the world is doing. It matters that you have this opportunity to help. You have this opportunity to serve, the opportunity to express. One is you're okay inside and you're spreading that outside. The other is you're not okay and you're trying to take from the outside. That sounds terrible to say you're trying to take because that's what everybody's doing. So don't feel bad about it. What the world judges is how are you doing it? But sometimes it's illegal and sometimes it's not nice. Sometimes it's immoral. You understand that? We're all doing it. There's just these limits about how you're allowed to do it. We wouldn't have laws if you were okay. I once tried to look how many laws there are. You don't break them, so you don't realize they're there. That's any place you are, there's laws restricting the behavior you can do. Do you understand that? Why? Because you would just abuse everybody and everything and take and do things, all right? And that, that's what we're doing. And it's perfectly reasonable. Why? Because if the world is the way we want it to be, we feel better. And if the world is not the way we want it to be, not only do we not feel better, but we can feel terrible if it's the way we don't want it to be. Have you noticed? So you are living in the world to try to fix yourself. That's what your career is, your job. Everyone says, go f find your passion. That, believe it or not, first of all, I want you to say, when we talk this way, it's because somebody has to talk to you this way. When you leave, forget it. Go about your business. It will wake you up, and little by little, you will go deeper. Because when they say, go find your passion, that's assuming you don't have it. A spiritual being is filled with passion, with every single thing they do at all times. The Shakti's pouring inside, raising up, feeding them. So Christ said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that leaveth the mouth of God. Okay, what does that mean? He's not talking about bread. He's talking about you don't live only by the outside world. You live by the spirit, the Shakti, the flow of energy that is feeding you from inside. So that's the difference between these two lives. Now, you're going to go out there and try to be okay. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a matter of right or wrong. Yoga has nothing to do with right or wrong. It has to do with whether it works or not. So if you go out there and you're lonely and you try to find somebody, good luck. Maybe you've tried. It can work sometimes, sometimes for a little while. Sometimes it works in the beginning, but then you kind of compromise and get a, you know, and we'll talk about it. It's not always as filled with all that love and shakti and openness, is it? You learn to get along, you learn to compromise. You, you want to look at it. If you are filled with love to start with, it's beautiful to share it. It's beautiful. And guess what? If the other person does something weird, it doesn't affect your love. You had the love before you met the person. You'll have the love after they leave. Wouldn't that be nice? As opposed to, I'm not okay. And so I found you, and you are making me feel better. And behave yourself. You better continue being the way I need you to be for me to feel better. Otherwise, I told you, we use words like, it's not working anymore. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not working anymore? What does that mean? It means I'm not okay. You used to make me feel better, and now you don't. i got to find somebody else. Sad to talk about it, isn't it? 
I like talking about it because I care about you. And I told you, it's not a matter of right or wrong. It's not a matter of renunciation. It's a matter, does it work? Does it work? Because you will find out that there are things that do work permanently, unconditionally. Love can be unconditional. No matter what happens, you are feeling that love. Why? Because it's being fed from inside. It's not being fed from outside. It's never being fed from outside. It is not true that you love somebody. It is not. What is true is you're closed, but you have love in there. There's always love in there, but there's clouds that are blocking it. This person or people or horse or car, really, it can be anything, can't it? It does what's called opens you. A painting can do it. Music can do it, can't it? It can open you. You change your mood completely by seeing somebody, seeing a painting, going somewhere, a vacation, music, whatever it is. Things can happen outside that open you. It is not the thing has love. It doesn't have love. Somebody else is standing looking at the same painting, puking. Somebody else is meeting the same person saying, oh my God, are you crazy? And by the way, tomorrow you could be saying that. It's not, it doesn't take another person, does it? So why? It's not about the person. It's about the fact that you're closed, and because you're closed, you don't feel love. If I close the blinds, the light doesn't come in. It's not the light's fault. The light is always there. But if I block it, I don't feel it. I don't see it. So if you close, you're not going to feel what's behind the closed door, which is the Shakti, which is the love, which is beauty, tremendous, always flowing inside, always, always, always. The most depressed person in the world is filled with Shakti. They're just not looking that way. If I have all the water, I I have a lake, a beautiful lake behind me. It's drinkable water. It's the freshest thing in the whole world, okay? But I'm looking onto the beach, and I'm thirsty, and I'm picking up rocks that seem to have a little bit of moisture on them and trying to suck the moisture off. I'm not paying attention where the moisture's coming from because I'm looking in the wrong direction. That analogy is exactly what's happening. There is love inside of you. There's tremendous beauty and passion all the time. It cannot go away. It has never gone away. There is nothing you will ever do that will make it go away. It's the same thing I said with the blinds. The sun is shining. You ain't going to stop it, but you can block it. So what you're doing is blocking. You're blocking your consciousness from looking in the direction of the love. You're looking in the direction of the depression. You're looking in the direction of the loneliness. It's all in there. But behind where you're looking is the lake that I talked to you about. So there's nothing wrong with going out there and saying, I'm not okay. Or we're talking about passion. Find your passion. You are the passion. All that's happening is that that particular person, place, or thing, or job, or situation is causing you to open. When your heart opens, you feel the love. The love's not coming from outside, ever. But I feel this connection. Sure you do. Your heart's open. The love's flowing, and it goes out toward the object that helped it open. Doesn't sound too romantic, does it? It's very romantic, because it's teaching you how to have love all the time. Instead of being conditional on that object that helped your heart open, and we'll talk about why it helped you open, it helped your heart open, and then they do something you don't like. How long does it take for your heart to close? If they say something, do something, or don't say something, or don't do something that you don't want, bam, closed. Have I exaggerated? It takes a billionth of a second for someone to not behave the way you expected them to or to do something you don't like. Whoa, you closed. I closed the blind. I opened the blind. I saw the light. Bam, I got scared. I closed the blind. That has nothing to do with the light. It has nothing to do with what's going on. It's inside of you. So if you learn to open your heart and open your mind, and we will talk about that because you're capable of that, you're not going to have that problem. So relationships can be perfectly beautiful if you're not using the relationship to open yourself because the person is never going to be exactly what you want them to be. I don't know if you've noticed that yet. It's not going to be. And even if they are, situations will happen outside, financial, health, which close you. And then you come home and they don't open you anymore. Why? Because you're closed. If the boss yells at you at work and you come home, you don't feel love for your spouse. If the boss, you got a raise and you did really great and you come home, you're filled with joy and love. Okay? You're doing it. 
period, all the time. That's how it's always been. Your opening and closing. There's nobody else in there, is there? Who's in there? You. Your parents in there? Your spouse in there? Your kids in there? No. You live in there. And it's your heart. And to sit there, and we'll talk about it, like I said, we'll talk about why you close it and how to open it and so on. But to sit there and close your heart and then expect somebody else to do what you can't do. Which is open it. You should be able to open your heart anytime you want. I want you to understand. You are so high that you will get to a point where if you go like that, love comes pouring out of your heart. Anytime you cross your hand across a chakra, it bursts open with all this shakti comes flying out. That's who you are. Well, why don't you feel that? Because you're closed. And because you're closed, you need things outside to stimulate an openness. And you don't even understand it. Sometimes you fall in love with something, you don't even understand why. Okay? It's so beautiful. All right. So those are the two lives you can live. You can either be filled with love and joy and share it, give it, spread it, a being of light, or you can be closed, whatever level, really closed, very depressed, a little bit closed, not doing so good, because I'm kind of open conditionally, right? When you win the lottery, you do real well. When you first meet somebody, it's very promising until they open their mouth (laughs) or they show up with a bow tie on. So you laugh all you want. It's true, isn't it? So I'm telling you, it's conditional upon the outside. It comes in and it causes it to open. And you have a choice. Either you go in there and find out why it closes. Right? Not, I need something to help me get open. Why am I closing? I live in here. It's my heart. It's my mind. It's nobody else's. Okay? So those are your choices to go out there and find what will cause you to open or to find out why you're closed. I used to teach them something. Some people make fun of me, right? You want to learn how to open? Don't close. That's deeper than you think it is. You don't know how to open. I mean, open your heart. <laughs> okay? Don't close. You know when you close, don't you? You know when something happens making you close, don't you? Don't. And guess what? If you don't close, you'll be open. And that's the essence of the spiritual path. Meditation is very, very good. It helps you stay centered, be conscious. This is beyond all that. Every minute of your life, you are dealing with yourself and with life. And you close all the time. If it rains when you don't want it to, if it thunders and you want to go camping tomorrow, you get upset, don't you? You get what's called disappointed, all that kind of stuff. In other words, I have conditions that I expected to make me open, and now they're probably not going to happen. It's not even that they didn't happen. They're probably not going to happen. You close. You met somebody, you really feel good about them, you're so excited, and they said they'd call you at 2.30. It's 2.35. How you doing? Shh, don't admit it. You're freaking out. You're freaking out. You're closing yourself over everything. Okay? And then you expect the outside world, especially a person or a job, or your kids, to cause you to open. And if they don't, you get upset. So, first question is, why do we close? If it's true that it's so beautiful inside, and it is, why would you close? I thought what you want is love. Why would you close so that you have to go find love when you are it? And which I always teach you this, but once it'll get through, you did that. What happened is at various times in your life, pretty much every day, things have happened that when they come in are not comfortable. It's not all comfortable when it comes in, is it? All kinds of big things, little things. Just talk about the little things. The driver in front of you, the weather, you read something in the paper. You understand that? You remembered something that was bad in the past, and you close. I want you to notice that. It's called witness consciousness. You notice, you close. Well, based on this talk, I want you to understand, you just gave away love. You just sat there and said, the fact that it's raining today is worth me not feeling love. Whoa. I'll tell you what, you want to work with that, right? I'll give you a penny, you give me a million dollars. We'll trade all the time. I'll be very happy to do it. You just gave away what you want, love, right? Because some stupid thing was the way you didn't want it to be. <laughs> the driver in front of you, the weather, you go quite a light. I don't know if you're like me. It's like, it's yellow, can I go? Oh, sh-, right? And all of a sudden, it's just a little weird energy goes on inside. You think that doesn't matter? That's called closing. That is literally closing. You know what I'm talking about, the weird feeling that happens inside? That is Shakti trying to flow and hitting your stuff, hitting your closing, and you feel these emotions and these weirdnesses. If you didn't do that, 
it wouldn't do that. It would rise. And over time, there will be more and more of it, and it will be blocked less and less. That's the entire spiritual path. Learning to stay open, period. Okay? You start with small things. I always teach you that. I call it low-hanging fruit in the new book. There are just things all day. Somebody didn't say hello. Somebody said hello when you didn't want them to because you're standing next to somebody who doesn't like that. I don't know. You're pretty complicated. It doesn't take much, does it? Okay? They're meaningless things. And you're trading off this whole beautiful state inside yourself by messing around with these stupid things. Where the cost-benefit analysis is 100% cost, zero benefit. What's the benefit of getting upset because the driver in front of you didn't use his blinkers? None. What's the benefit of getting upset because you caught a light? Uh, what's the benefit of getting upset because you caught every light, one after the other? It didn't do any good, did it? It didn't change the lights. Didn't change your timing. Didn't do a single thing. So the cost is 100%. What's the benefit? Nothing. So why are you doing it? That's not rational. A business person would never do that. You give it a choice, cost-benefit analysis. Here, boss, 100% cost, zero benefit. Let's do it. I want you to look at your interaction with yourself as an intelligent exchange. You're an intelligent person. And so you learn to start working with yourself to say, no, I don't want to close. This is not worth closing over. Because over time, it's giving up my love. It's giving up my passion. It's giving up the beauty that can flow inside of me. So what do you do? There are all kinds of techniques. And I like all of them. Any technique you do that you are sincerely doing in order to let go of the closing is fine with me. I don't want to close. So I'll do a mantra. I'll breathe. I'll relax. I'll offer to give it to God. Whatever you want. I don't care. I'm doing it because I don't want to close. I want to learn not to close. So instead of allowing the habit of closing to take place, I'm going to put out some effort, and I don't care what the effort is. What I care about is the intent. The intent is, I'm going to learn not to close. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to learn not to close. And the more I learn not to close, I'm telling you, they write us from all over the world. The vast majority, at least 60%, are thank yous. In other words, it works. Thank you. My whole life changed. Because I did what? Because you're relaxed instead of closed? Yes. Yes. And the fact that you didn't go down with it is not the reward. The reward is, okay, in that moment, I made it through without closing. Over time, as you learn not to close, you will feel the Shakti flow. You will feel energy. You'll feel more energy. Feel more positive. Of course you will. Why is that? Take a teacher. If you store everything that ever bothered you inside of you you're going to be bothered that's what happens when you store things in it you build them up and you have done that haven't you are the things with your past that are over that you still bother yourself about well what's the benefit of that that's the silliest thing i ever heard of there's no benefit in being bothered by your past it's not happening especially your childhood it's over it's done you made it congratulations why would you let something that mommy did when you were three years old or daddy did when you were six whatever it is 20 30 40 50 years ago why would you carry that inside of you and let it bother you? You have the right to let it go, and you have the ability to let it go, but not right at this moment you don't have the ability because you haven't built the ability to let go. You haven't practiced, like practicing the piano. You get better at the piano if you practice. You get better at letting go of things if you practice, but we don't practice. We complain. You understand that? We say God doesn't like us. Or why does that happen to me? It's not fair. I never get what I want. Oh, fine. Go do that. Or you're just going to get worse and worse. Instead, you sit there and say, fine. I'm born onto a planet. I don't know where I came from. I'm going to be here for a few years. A few. It's been here for 4.5 billion. How long are you going to be here? That's a very few years. So I fell down on a planet. I'm going to leave soon. And in the meantime, there's all these things that go on. It's exciting. There's nothing going on on Mars. Nothing going on Saturn, Jupiter, anywhere. There's nothing we've seen. With the James Webb Telescope, with the Hubble, we've not seen a single thing going on that seems too interesting. Unless you're like you know, supernovas, you know, blowing up and <laughs> black holes. All kinds of very interesting things. I don't think it lasts too long. Okay? This planet is God's idea of Disney World. There's always something going on for everybody on the planet. You know, it costs nothing to look in front of you. You see colors, shapes, sounds, tastes, feelings, just all the time, every time. What do you pay for that? Nothing. But instead of being willing to experience it and let it inspire you, let it, wow, there's a flower on the side of the road. In this, on this planet, there's flowers that grow on the side of the road. Did you know that? 
Did you know that on this planet, there are birds that sing? <laughs> what the heck? Where did that come from? This, this planet is spinning in the middle of black nowhere, empty space, and there's all this stuff going on. And how do you do with it? Not so good, man. All right? Because there are going to be things that happen that are not comfortable. Things happen, but then they're over. But you don't let them be over, do you? You store them inside. Oh, that was terrible. You, you tell me you got divorced five years ago. Why are you still talking about it? Why are you still having the same arguments inside the head? Why can you not go to a party where you think he or she might be? You're not divorced. Not inside, you're not. You don't know how to. It's too painful to you. So what you start doing is you start catching on that as long as I do that, I'm going to be storing inside of me what's blocking my flow of energy. That's what it boils down to. It is blocking the flow of my energy, and I don't want it to. I don't want to have to go out and find something to compensate. Here we go. I don't want to have to go out and find things, people, places, and things that compensate for the fact that I'm blocked. I want to be open. See, two types of lives. One is you're out there trying to compensate for the blockages you built inside. The other is you're working on letting go of those blockages so you become whole and complete within yourself. Now, it doesn't mean in the meantime you don't have relationships. It doesn't mean you don't get a job that makes you feel passion. It's called a stairway to heaven. It's not a jump. As long as your intent, that's what matters. Your intent is, I'm going to spend the rest of my life letting go of the junk I've stored inside and I ain't taking on anymore. That's a spiritual person. And guess what? It doesn't matter if you believe in God or because when it's done, you're going to go to God. When it's done, you won't believe you'll experience. When enough of that energy comes rushing up inside of you and you realize you're a being of Shakti, you're a being of light, you're a being of energy. Not because you believe you are. You are. You are a beam of light. Everybody is. Everybody is the same. But they're blocked from different things. We've held on to different things. Those are our past. And so it blocks the energy. And now we spend our life trying to compensate. And guess what? Have you ever heard a thing? Well, yeah, she's got father issues and that's who she's dating. What does that mean? It means that that which you blocked is going to determine what compensates for it. I'm going to move to Germany. Why? Because on the Autobahn, there's no speed limit. I love to drive fast and there's no traffic lights either. Like, give me a break. Why don't you just let go of what's blocked inside of you that needs to be like that so you can enjoy wherever you are because you're capable of it. So that life, it's called the inner work. It's your inner work. You're doing outer work all the time. And I, I, I swear, I've, I've grown. <laughs> I'm mature now. I'm not going to take it away from you because I can't anyways. <laughs> you won't listen. So fine, do what you're doing, all right? But pay attention. Pay attention at the stress. Pay attention to fear it creates. Decide that you like somebody and then see them with somebody else. Decide that you want a certain thing to happen with your job or with this or with that and then see how much you worry that it won't. See how anxious you are. Why? What is anxiety? What is anxiety and stress? The fact that you're in there not okay. If you're okay, there's no stress. <laughs> when you're filled with love and joy, you no stress, there's no anxiety because you got what you want. But if you don't have what you want, and things out there you think will help you get them also could make you worse. There's a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress. What's that anxiety? Maybe it won't be the way I want it to be. How can I make it be the way I want it to be? What if I fail? All the time. A constant situation. No, no. You have to come back in here and say, I am whole and complete within myself. I don't experience it because I've blocked the exact flow of energy that I'm looking for. When you find somebody in the open you, I'm telling you, that flow is what was always in there. But you open the blinds. The sun was always shining. You're opening the blinds and not make the sun shine. You're meeting that person who opened you did not make the energy be inside of you. It just let it come out. It let it come up because you stopped blocking it. So you have a choice. Either be anxious, and you know you are, and scared and insecure and all that kind of stuff because you have to get the world the way you want. Sometimes you can't decide how you want it to be, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. People come to me all the time, say, well, what about decisions? There are no decisions. There are no decisions. They're meaningless. What do you mean? This is what you call a decision. I'm not okay. Check. 
<laughs> That's step one. If you're okay, who cares? Live in New York, live in Gainesville. Be married, be single. Have children, don't. You're not trying to use the outside to fix what's wrong with you. You're nothing wrong with you. There. That's why a spiritual being has no decisions. They just work with the unfolding of life. And it's, it's fun. It's fine. It's beautiful. But he said, but what if you have a job here and you have a job there? Let's say you looked at it. And if you took the job in Texas, you start thinking, oh, it could be like this, it could be like that, but I don't like the politics, or like this, blah, 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 right? And you're kind of fighting inside yourself, right? Or in New York, well, it's cold, I don't like the cold weather. You're just doing all that. That's because you're trying to find out what you think will make you be okay. Every decision you're having trouble making is you're trying it on like clothes. You do it all the time, right? You go to the web and look at this and then try that and talk to other people. You're trying it on to see how will this make me feel? Fair enough? Decide we want to go on a vacation. How will this make me feel? That's all because you think it will compensate for what's wrong with you. And you're trying to decide which one will do it. If you're okay, you don't have that problem. I'm fine. I'll be fine anywhere. Wouldn't that be fun? I will be fine anywhere for the rest of my life. Oh, how would you like to feel that? Not feel it. How would you like to know that? No matter what happens, no matter what befalls you, you will be fine. And you'll just deal with it the best you can and it'll be fun. You're capable of that state, but not if you block yourself and then expect the world to unblock you. Then you have to decide, should I marry, should I not? There's every single thing, okay? And if you're married, should I get divorced? I don't know, should I say something? Look at all the anxiety you carry around. It's all because you're trying to use the situations outside to be okay. And instead, spirituality says, fine, okay, you're going to do it anyways. Don't worry about that. But at least work on creating something inside that over time, you won't have to keep doing that. What does that mean? Let go of your blockages. That's the entire spiritual path. Okay, like I said, believe in God, fine. It's nice. You give them to God. You can do all kinds of nice things. You don't believe in God, fine. It doesn't matter. The question is, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you doing this work? If you're doing this work, that energy is going to awaken in you over time. It can't not, because you stop blocking it, all right? And you're going to start going higher and higher, and you'll start realizing, wow, there's something really beautiful going on here. Then you'll know about God, about real God, not God of the mind, not the God that gives you what you want. We were talking about that. People nowadays consider spirituality as getting what you want. A law of abundance. You should have everything. Attract to yourself whatever you want. And yes, there's a law of attraction. There's absolutely a law of attraction. What I want you to look at is why do you need to attract things to yourself? Why are you not okay with the unfolding of life and the beauty that's going on inside of you so now you can give instead of take? When you say you're attracting to yourself, you're taking. What do you mean? You're trying to make the world be the way you want. Oh, you like to look at that way, do you? <laughs> right? That's because we're so caught in ourselves that we don't look at what it would be like to not be caught in ourselves. In the life where you're working inside, you're opening yourself, you're your own responsibility, and then you're shedding that light everywhere. You don't have to try to shed the light. It goes everywhere. It just pours off of you. So this are the two lives. One is I'm not okay, and I'm trying to get situations, people, places, and things in a way that will make me feel better. The other is, I'm not okay. Why am I not okay? Why am I not okay? And what do I do about that? Wow. Now you see what spirituality is? It's called the inner work instead of the outer work. We talk about a worldly person. I don't say that with disdain or anything like that. You know, I do business, all kinds of stuff, right? That's not what worldly means. Worldly means they think the answer is in the world. They think the answer to their problems and everything else is situations in the world. So then you're out in the world. It's not saying this type of business, that type of business. It's just basically saying, you think the answer is out there. I know it's not. All your spiritual teachers, the great ones, masters and everybody tell you, it's not. The answer is inside, isn't it? What did Christ tell you? The kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within you. That's literal. It's within you. It's inside. The flow is inside. So basically, you make the decision, which way do I want to live my life? But like I said, it's not a renunciation. 
Don't write me and say, I'm madly in love with this person. Love is flowing and so on. But I'm afraid that it's because I need them to be a certain way that I feel the love. What should I do? If you feel love, that's beautiful. That's wonderful, okay? Just watch when you don't. Watch when you close. Watch when you judge. Watch what it is that makes the love not be as strong as it was yesterday or three minutes ago or (laughs) 10 seconds ago. In other words, you do tend to close, don't you? That's where your spiritual growth is. It's not in not having a relationship. It's not in not enjoying and having love. It's in sitting there saying, if I said I love you yesterday, why don't I today? Well, you should see what she said. I don't care what she said, nor should you. Because you're just trading off what she said because she was in a bad mood. You're trading your love off for a bad mood. I ain't doing that. That's a terrible trade. And so you learn to let go. You let go. But what if it turns out that she's not, or he, she or he's not, what I thought they were? It'll show up. You don't have to be looking for it. You have to look for it because you're scared that it will hurt you or you won't get what you want. If you're wise, you'll say, I'm not using the relationship for that. I'm using the relationship to let go of myself. I'm using the relationship to practice being in love. Not you made me feel love, so you better keep doing it. Figure it out what I need. Who wants to live like that? I don't. What I want to feel is love. I want to feel inspiration. I want to feel joy. And I want to share it with people. And they're going to be different. Everyone's different. They've all had different experiences in life, therefore they're all different. And that was turned you on, turned somebody else off, and that was turned you on yesterday, turned you off today. Fine. I don't care. I love you. Why? Because I'm not trying to use you to give me love. I'm using you to let go of what's keeping me from love. The fact that you, you want to go out on your own and uh, 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 I feel jealous and I feel uncomfortable with it and all that kind of stuff, right? Good. I get, to, I get to let go of that. I get to let go of that. See the difference? I get to let go of what's blocking me from feeling love all the time. Relationships are very, very good for that, aren't they? They'll hit you all the time. The question is, are you going to fight to have the relationship be the way you want so you can feel better regardless of what effect it has on the other person? Or are you going to sit there and say, not just the relationship, my whole life is about letting go of what's blocking me. That's the purpose of my life. Not the job, not the career, not the children, not the spouse, not what I look like, whether people like me. No, 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 no. We're all going to die, and we won't look good when we die. All right? So don't worry about it. (laughs) Okay? Imagine somebody saying, I don't want an open casket. Why? I'm embarrassed. (laughs) You're not even there. (laughs) I don't want you to be like that. You lose if you're like that. You have to struggle and fight and worry and do everything your whole life. Instead, you sit there and say, my life is about letting go of myself, my personal self, letting go of that so that I can feel all this beautiful love pouring inside. And then, I tell you, you don't have to share it. It shares itself. Hey, if somebody's depressed and they come in the room, do you feel it? All right. If somebody's in ecstasy and they come in the room, have you ever been in a room with someone that's truly in ecstasy? I told you once, I don't usually talk about this. I had the honor of being not in a room, in a hall, 10 times the size and somebody was sitting up in the front a very very high being very rare and I couldn't walk toward them I was three times the size of this room I, it was like a magnetic field that as I tried to walk every step I took all this ecstasy was pouring that's a high being okay there are such beings guess what you're it you have that to give to the world and instead it puts it around with, yeah, he said to me, I don't know, he said. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Right? So you decide that the purpose of my life is not to find this or get this or keep this or struggle for that or argue that I'm right or something like that. The purpose is, once you hit witness consciousness, what does that mean? It means I'm not caught in my stuff. It's still there, <laughs> okay? But I'm not caught in it. Do you have an ego? Some people said, no, I'm beyond ego. You are not. The very fact that you said that means you have an ego. It means you have a self-concept, okay? Can you see how sensitive it is to have an ego? Can you see if she thinks that someone thought that somebody else thought that they don't like you? How are you doing? If you watch something on TV that reminds you of something that happened 10 years ago, how are you doing? It's like you've got an ego. You have a thing in there that's not okay, The ego's never okay. 
Never. If you go out there and you're a musician and you do so well that everybody claps and they want to see you again, you're scared the next time that you will fail. Anybody got fear of failure? Don't sit there and tell me it's a psychological problem. It's ego. Ego always is like that. I don't care what you say. Why? It's fake. You made up yourself. It's called a self-concept. I'm strong, I'm tall, I'm handsome, I'm beautiful, I'm young, whatever the heck it is. And so basically you've got this whole concept that you built about yourself. How exposed is that? One person walks up and says, oh, you're full of it, you're, just mean. you're, you're lying to everybody. How do you feel? You're just a big liar. What you're saying is not the truth at all. You're making yourself up. You, you've never played an instrument in your life. Well, I'm, 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 wait, come here. <laughs> get def- anybody get defensive? Doesn't even take that much to get defensive, does it? The slightest little thing, okay? It's, it's amazing. You're living with that, and you're trying to appease it. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to suppress it. That doesn't do any good. I don't want you to deny it. That doesn't do any good. I want you to finally take a seat of consciousness where you're aware I have inside of me a target and everything seems to hit it. And I know what the target is. It's my ego deciding how it needs things to be for me to be okay. I don't want to use me. It is the ego deciding how things need to be for it to be okay. And Ramakrishna, great, great saint from India, he used to call what you call me, this. The thoughts, the emotions, the body. No, I don't think about this. I don't care about this. He's sitting behind and he's seeing it. They also asked him, he's a fully enlightened being, and that, that's a big word, fully enlightened, he's merged, right? They asked him, does an enlightened being ever feel anger? You know what he said? Yes. Whoa, yes. He said it's like riding on water. Comes in and passes through. Okay, something hits something, boop, gone. How'd you like to be that? Then it doesn't matter, does it? That's how you deal with your ego. I have one. It is ultra sensitive, like everybody else's. It knows what it wants, and it gets upset when it doesn't get it. It knows what it doesn't want, and it gets upset even thinking that it might get it. (laughs) It's unbelievable. It doesn't need events. Thoughts can cause it trouble, can't it? What if I fail? What if I don't do well on the test? If I don't do well on the test, then I, I won't get the highest grade, and then I want to go to the college that I want to go to. Now you really won't do well because you're a neurotic mess when you take the test. Okay? Ego is like that, but you're not the ego. You're the consciousness that is aware of what's going on in there. And eventually you're going to see this thing is hard to live with, isn't it? <laughs> I can give you example after example, couldn't I? But I don't need to, do I? She is sensitive, period. Okay? And when, if you think you're not sensitive, it's because you're pushing it away. I don't care what you think. Well, that means you do. <laughs> why, why do you, if you don't care what I think, why are you even looking at me? Why are you even checking anything out? Why are you doing anything? It's because you're trying to be so strong that you put walls around your ego. The people that are the most strong, the politicians, these powerful people, right? They can't handle anything. They just put a wall around it and surround themselves with people so nothing hits their ego. I told you. If you were number one on Forbes' list of the most wealthy person in the world last year and number two this year, it bothers you. Just like you're bothered if this happens or that happens. It just never goes away because the ego has a self-concept and it defines itself in a certain way. And if anything happens at all that's not that way, either suppress it or we push it away or we rationalize it away. Why do I care? I'm rich. I don't care what they think. Right, that means you do. <laughs> Otherwise, you would not have the thought. Do you understand that? Do you understand you're capable of, of being completely high and filled with love and joy all the time and not having that crap going on inside of you and then having to live a life that compensates for the fact that you can't... It's not that you can't handle life or people. You can't handle your ego when you're in the presence of people. It gets scared. It gets disturbed. It gets desirous. It gets fearful, doesn't it? And you have this whole stuff going on in there Spirituality is about recognizing, okay, and by the way, you built that in there. The stuff you stored from the past that made you happy or sad built your ego. That's how you built your whole self-concept. I'm the one who was Dorothy in the fifth grade in Wizard of Oz, and I'm the one that, here, who am I? So-and-so's husband. No, no. What were you before you met him? What will you be if he leaves? You don't want to know that. You don't want me. It just bothered you that I even said that. It's like basically there's this thing in there that built a concept of itself and it's presenting it to everybody and it wants them to accept it. You don't have to live like that. 
You don't want to live like that because then you open and close based on the conditions that took place. You take witness consciousness. You take a seat. You start noticing. Like I said, right now, you're not going to stop everything you're doing. I don't care. I care that you take the seat inside and you watch. That's called witness consciousness, objective observation. You just notice how absurd what's going on in there. And you notice you'll never win. You will, you've never won yet. You know, I ask people, isn't it true when you're a child trying to get things the way you want? In high school, junior high and high school, it's pretty sensitive times, right? Being accepted or rejected, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's been in there the whole time. And the whole time, you tried to do what would make it feel better. Every single thing. Well, what kind of person recognizes that every moment of their life they've been doing the same thing and they're still doing it? At what point do you wake up and say, it doesn't work? It doesn't work. I've been doing it my whole life. I needed the toy. I needed the person. I needed this. I needed the boat. I needed the car. I needed the job. I needed the corner office. I needed every single thing. And yet I'm still needing stuff, aren't I? Why? It doesn't work. It can't work. Ego will never, ever be satisfied. It's something you made up. It's not real. And it knows it's not real. And so it has to keep selling itself. It has to keep presenting itself. It feels challenged all the time. So the alternative is to take a seat of consciousness, notice, and I just want you to breathe. Just breathe. What do you mean? Relax. When you see the ego do something and you feel it get weird, don't yell at it. You built that ego. Don't you dare yell at that ego. You built your self-concept out of your experience that you've had, that you liked and didn't like. You made this little house inside yourself. Just relax. Keep relaxing your shoulders. Relax your tummy. But inside, relax. Let go. Don't fight it. Don't even engage it. Just say, okay, there's an ego. There's a vacuum cleaner. Here's a blender. Here's a car. Here's an ego. There are things in the universe, aren't they? And they express themselves. The blender goes, the car goes, and this thing goes, I don't know. I can't believe she said that to me. I used to call it an appliance, but it's an appliance you can't unplug, all right? It doesn't have an off button, right? So your best bet, if it doesn't have an off button, is to learn to be comfortable with whatever it's doing. It can't own you unless you pay attention to it. Yukteswar, Yogananda's guru, said, an ignored guest quickly leaves. I just taught you that, didn't I? So what do you do with the ego? Relax. Just relax. So you just learn to be comfortable inside and then you don't have to devote your life. Right now you devoted your life to your ego. What it wants and what it doesn't want, you're trying to manipulate everything. That's what we talked about, right? You don't have to do that. If you can handle, the ego gets uncomfortable sometimes, just relax through it. Just relax through it. I can handle this. But start with the small stuff I told you. Start with the stuff that really makes no difference but you get upset anyways. So. You want to let go of the old stuff that you stored in there. But what good is it if you let go of the old stuff if you put new stuff in there? So the easiest thing to do on your path, and the most important, no more. You wake up in the morning, you wake up in the morning, and you remember this talk. You remember the purpose of my life, not just the day. The purpose of my life is to clean up in here, to let go of the blinds that close. I don't want to close. I want to be open. I want to feel joy and inspiration and so on. That's the purpose. So therefore, during this day, I'll do my work. I'll have my relationship. I'll pick up the kids and whatever it is. But inside, I'm letting go. Every minute, every second. Whatever comes up, relax, release. I give you in the new book, I give you many techniques for how to let go of this stuff in real time. This is where the rubber hits the road. You just keep letting go. And so then you come to the end of the day, you sit down, have a few minutes with yourself, and you ask, How'd I do? Well, if it's in there freaking out of what happened, then you didn't do too good. If it's in there saying, wow, things happened that I used to get upset about, I didn't. I breathed. I breathed through it. All right? And if there's something in there, let it go. I dare you. But, but there's no buts. You're welcome to keep it in there. You can keep it in your whole life if you want and be bothered by it. If that's what you want to do, be bothered, just keep it in there and let it bother you. If you don't want to be bothered by it, I'm not saying it was just or unjust or fair or like and not like. No, that's not what it's about. It's about the fact that if it's in there causing trouble and you don't let it go, it's going to keep being in there causing trouble. Tomorrow you'll see somebody remind you of it. Next year you'll remember something. You understand that? You just stored disturbance inside of you, didn't you? And now you're wondering why I should let it go. So you don't be disturbed. There. It's very rational. So you relax through it. But you do it with the small stuff to start with. And then you're going to find out, 
I'm getting good at this. People write me all the time. I think that's fascinating. They write me, I'm doing real well with low-hanging fruit. Then they talk about some bigger stuff. I just like that they're doing real well with low-hanging fruit. Most people aren't. And they said, I'm letting go all the time. I'm letting go. I'm letting go. And it works. I'm letting go. So now this happened. It was bigger, right? What, what should I do? All right. The answer is, to the best of your ability, do the same thing you did with the little stuff. Let go. But what if I can't? If you can't let go, then you can't let go. You do the best that you can. That's all you can do. If you're playing the piano and you make some mistakes, but you do the best that you can do, you'll get better. Don't judge yourself. What if I fall? What if I was doing really well and I got really upset? I threw things and then what happened? I noticed and I felt really bad. Okay, good. Good. I'm glad you feel bad. I'm glad you saw it. Stand up. That's all you can do. No judgment, no fear, no blame, no shame. You are here to grow and you have the right to grow. If you were already there, you wouldn't be growing. What it means to grow is you need to grow. And so you accept it, but just always do the best you can. If you will do the best you can, you will get there. It will get better all the time. So you do that with each day. You let go of the stuff that happened that day, and you'll find out I'm better and better at it. And then I know what happened to me is I do it, and the bigger stuff would happen. Like, okay, I learned how to do that. And then a certain thing would happen that was really bigger. And I don't know if this happened to you, but he'd be in there and saying, I have invested so much so far of letting go of so much I ain't giving up now. And all of a sudden, he's inspired because he invested. Remember all the time you let go of this, you let go of that, you let go of that, right? right? Now I'm going back down there, I'm going back down there. Oh, that's what I want you. And the next thing you know, you're letting go of stuff you never thought you could let go of. And then your past will start coming up. Once you can handle everything that happened today and tomorrow and yesterday, by itself, your past will start coming up. Why? Because if you shove stuff on top of it, it can't come up. If you let go and don't put stuff on top of it, you left room for it to come up. What do you do when it comes up? Love it. Worship it. Beg it to do more. Why? Because you've seen how beautiful it is on the other side of that. So when mommy comes up or daddy comes up or the first boyfriend or whatever it is, when they come up from high school, from whatever it is, you look at it. Am I going down for that? No. But it hurts. Of course it hurts. Of course it hurts. It was stored with pain. That's why you stored it. You didn't want to handle the pain. It's going to come back with pain. And so you let go. And like I said, what happens if I do my best and I, I don't? So what? If you start playing the piano, you're going to make mistakes. <laughs> don't sit there and say, I can't play. No, that's why you practice. You just keep practicing. You keep practicing. And eventually, like I said, you will let go enough where right now your consciousness is drawn down, out into the world, down into your heart, down into your mind. You don't realize it because you haven't felt the opposite, but it's literally being pulled down. You're being distracted by your thoughts, distracted by your emotions, distracted by the bodily feelings, and distracted by the world, aren't you? It's always pulling you down. When you let go enough, it stops doing that, and it changes direction, and it starts flowing up. You start smiling all the time, and you just feel joy all the time. You feel love all the time, right? But, but that's not nice. What if things are terrible going out of the world? You bring your joy into understanding and you see, what can I do to help? But you don't go down. And what good does it do to have another person down? You just understand my job is to be up so that I can help. If I'm down, I'm just another one of the problems. I'm out there screaming and yelling. People talk about, well, what about activism? Okay. A spiritual being can be an activist. Gandhi was certainly an activist, all right? Martin Luther King was an activist. But they were centered. They were clear. They brought to the party a center, clear being filled with love, filled with God, if you will. And then they dealt with the situation outside to the best of their ability. And they changed things. So it's not that you can't be an activist. It's just you're not a reactivist. You're not out there because you can't handle things. All right, so we've had a nice discussion that was based on what I started. There's two lives you can live, and every one of you, it has nothing to do with your money, male, female, age, has nothing to do with anything. It has to do with you. You can live a life that says, I'm not okay, you guys get your act together. All of you, all the time, good luck, <laughs> okay? Or you live a life that says, if I'm not okay, I got some work to do in here. It's my work. And you just keep working with yourself and letting go. And you will do something very great. You'll bring beauty into this world. Mm. Chai Griff.